Welcome to the White Glove Strategic Guesting Training. We're going to cover stage one in the process today. You know, over 61% of podcasters say that marketing and building an audience is among their their top challenges. Anytime you look at a list of challenges that podcasters face, it seems like at least 75% of everything listed has to do with promoting the show and getting it out to all areas of the internet like we all want to do. You know, what's funny about that is that's our challenge as podcasters, but what about the listeners? What about those people that we're trying to get out to? Well, would it surprise you to know that just about 73% of listeners say that finding a show for them to listen to is one of their top challenges or their top challenge? So isn't that funny how we want them to find us and they're looking for us? So you've got a great show. It's time for you to get out there and get found because people are looking for you. One of the ways is through having guests on your show. And that's why I'm putting so much time and effort into helping people get better guests for their show. Just to give you an idea of the power of that, when there there have been a lot of studies recently, especially with the skyrocketing popularity of podcasting, there have been several studies that have gone out. And here's one of them where they ask people, where did you find your podcast that, you know, the podcast that you listen to? I know, you know, one study showed that people are listening to over seven hours of podcasts a week. They're saying that they're listening to podcasts more than they're spending time on social media, which is crazy. So again, they're out there. How are they finding those podcasts that they're listening to? These studies are also showing that anywhere from 70 to 85% of podcast listeners, they listen to the whole thing or at least most of it. So these are loyal people who want to not only find you, unlike blog posts where they spend about five to 15 minutes on a blog post, they're really spending time with you. So who could ask for a more ideal audience than podcast listeners? I, I would argue that there's just no other medium out there that even comes close to it. So again, how are they finding those podcasts if they're list- that they're listening to so much and that they're so loyal to? Well, 40% say that they search on the podcast listening apps directory. I have to say, usually that's how I find podcasts. 18%, they directly ask someone, you know, what are you listening to? I mean, we've all been in groups. If you listen to podcasts like I do, you know, we're always looking for a good podcast to find so we can relate to what the listeners are saying. Uh, 15% social media, 13% Google, 13% uh, going through the podcast chart or the featured. Usually, I mean, we've all been there. We're looking for something new that maybe we're the ones giving other people tips and tidbits on what to listen to next. So that's always a good spot too. The reason that I'm even showing you this is to really illustrate the power of guesting. So there are ways, first of all, I just want to say like we can control a lot of these. So imagine somebody's on this directory and they're searching for someone else that they know and they want to, they love hearing them and they're in, you know, they, they're the same audience that you share and they just happen to be a guest on your show. Your show is going to come up in that directory. So for example, I interviewed Tom Schwab, great interview. I've interviewed, you know, Nathan Hirsch and all these different people who have a following and want to hear what they have to say because they give some of the best advice in their entire, I would argue the best advice in their industry. And so people are like, I love their advice. I want it now. What did they say about this or that? So they're going to go look up their name. And if they were a guest on your show, your show is going to turn up. So this is an extremely powerful way to get on there. I know a lot of podcasters complain, you know, I can't get my guests to uh, you know, promote me. And so there's all these articles about how to promote. We have ways that you can get your guests to promote, which we'll cover in uh, stage five. We'll talk about it a lot more, but I mean, this top way people are finding podcasts, you don't have to do anything except for have them on your show. And you're going to be showing up for people who want to find out what they have to say. So that's a huge one. As far as directly asking someone that, you know, I mean, out of the five, uh, five things, three out of the five, you can control. Let's just start with that. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to focus on getting found on the app directory, super powerful, especially when it comes to guesting, um, social media and search on Google. 
totally you can control those things. Uh, again, getting featured, there are ways to do that. Again, that's another thing that it just takes so much time and effort, especially when you're really trying to get some traction and build momentum. Let's just focus on the three things that you can control, especially when one's sitting at 40%. So on social media, again, guesting you're out there and you have that person's followers that you're also exposed to. So you can post on your own social media, but as soon as you start tagging them and then they start sharing it, boom, you have exponential exposure that you wouldn't have had if you were just doing this on your own. And then again, search on Google. Search engine optimizing your podcast, your show notes, getting all of those inbound links from social media. It is so powerful when it comes to being found on search. You know, if you do a podcast on construction, let's say, and someone's out there and they're like, how can I find a builder in my area? And then suddenly you, you know, you're a builder, you're doing a podcast and you're doing an episode on, you know, finding builders and what kind of things, you know, builders have to do. Like, let's say you, um, you have the builders association on your show and you specifically are talking about like, how do people find builders? What are the differences between, you know, being a member in your association, not being a member in your association when you're optimizing your content for topics then people are going to be able to go to Google, look up those topics and boom, there's your podcast. There are different places to um, insert SEO. And there's always one portion of the content distribution that is always optimized for interview with that person's name. It's either a blog post or it's the show notes. And we consistently do that because when someone searches for them, we want to show up on at, at page one, at least page two, Um, but usually page one. So these are just, again, these are huge ways to control it. I talk a lot more about that with the overall podcast ignition system. So I highly encourage you to keep following me because I talk about all this stuff a lot when I'm talking about promotion. But today I just wanted to show you as you're doing this, you're optimizing this opportunity of having another name, another audience that will highly contribute to being found by listeners who are looking for your show. What I want you to do is get in the driver's seat. So a lot of podcasters, I talk to a lot of podcasters and they're either telling me, I don't know how to find guests. You know, where do I go? How do I process it? Like, you know, where's my time best spent? That's one side of it. The other side of it is I get all these requests. Like this is actually where I am is like, I get so many requests to be a guest on my show. How do I vet my guests? How do I prioritize who's on the show while still being able to keep other people in the pipeline? Because, you know, there's a lot of guests. Um, How can we prioritize that? So this system, our five stage white glove strategic guesting system helps do both of those things. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit less about the vetting today. The intake form really helps us prioritize. So that actually happens in stage three. So I'll talk a lot more about vetting your guests in stage three. Today, I'm going to talk about stage one, which is the first impression. Okay. So I don't know. You probably don't watch The Bachelor because you're busy and successful and, you know, you do a podcast. So you're a busy person. And so, you know, unlikely to watch The Bachelor. But, you know, um, the first impression makes a big difference. So like on The Bachelor, there's always on the first date, like they see all these people show up at the step. You know, if you're The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, all these people show up that you could possibly date. And then one person on the first day gets a first impression rose and then they get they're guaranteed to not get kicked off the show the first episode. Well, this first impression, you are one of the people vying for the attention of potential guests. Your potential guests are busy people too. Okay. Not all of them are going to be, you know, podcasters again, you know, if you're in what I call unicorn industry, where you're in an industry where it's not completely inundated with podcasting, which is, it's amazing. And I envy that actually, uh, because, you know, you're in this industry where people really want the information, but there's just not inundated with all these podcasts. You're more likely to have guests on your show that maybe don't aren't as experienced, or they're going to get an email from you kind of cold out of the blue. And they're like, I don't even know what a podcast is. What's in it for me. I don't get it. Uh, that's where I started. I built the system based on that response. 
So what happens is, as I've moved into using this system with people who are more savvy when it comes to podcasting, I've been able to meet a lot more people because I had to do it in the hard days. I mean, you look at, I always say like any real estate agent who started in 2007, 2008 and crushed it can, can operate in any market and crush it. Okay. That's where you're at right now. I've got this system that was built when it was really difficult to get, you know, get attention from potential guests. And now if you have a podcast where your industry is inundated with podcasts, you're able to reach out and it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, Either way, in either market, there are huge advantages. So um, there isn't an industry where I don't feel completely confident that this will work. I just want to go through some ways that, well, a couple things. One is I want to show you the leads list. So What we've done, again, we're wanting a first impression. So um, I hesitate to even say, but we manage this as a prospecting system. So you imagine the first thing you need to do is set up criteria. So what would your ideal guests look like? Now, strategic guesting, I do actually a whole training just on strategic guesting. And the fact that we have three different categories of guests that we approach that we want to have on our show. And from there, um, with each category, there are certain criteria. One of the categories that we reach out to are potential clients. Now, um, we do call, this is white glove strategic guesting. So our guests are treated amazingly, but we are strategic in the sense that we are specific about who we reach out to. And that's really nice for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you, if you know exactly who it is that you want on your show as a potential client, number one, you, they're going to have amazing content for you because they can share what the struggles are that they're having. They can share what's worked, what Um, they've done well, you get to learn their story. You can understand better if it's somebody you would want to work with, if it's a, if it is truly a good fit, if it's worth having a conversation afterwards. And, you know, again, there's another training on like, make sure that you talk to them ahead of time about the fact that you are going to, you know, you do only meet with people that you could see building a relationship with beyond the episode. Um, But But once you have that criteria in place, for example, I used to reach out to real estate agents. So um, those were the people that I worked with the most. And so I had a set criteria. I was like, I want, you know, real estate agents who have sold at least $20 million in real estate in the last year. I want high producing agents who, who understand marketing, because if they don't, number one, my audience, my audience is going to be bored. Okay. It's not exciting to talk to somebody who doesn't even get what I do. They don't. Um, value it. They just want to go work. So, so that was a criteria, not only for the fact that I don't want to work with someone who doesn't value marketing, but for the fact that the, that what they're going to say isn't going to provide value for the audience. So it's really, there are so many benefits to sitting down and writing down who is your ideal customer? Who is that's going to be your ideal guest. So Again, that's just one segment. We also have rock stars. So people that you want on your show because they're amazing and you just want to know all of their brilliance. And then another segment that are potential collaborators. So they're people who are in complementary industries that they share your audience, but they don't directly compete with what you do. So all of that's covered in our um, uh, profit podcasting. And I would love to talk to you more about just that segment of it, but just understand that there are those three segments, this white glove strategic guesting, I am going to, for today's purpose, lean more into the prospect, like the potential client, because the rest of them are way easier. And I'd be happy to answer your questions afterwards about, about the other two and how to prospect them. But since stage one is just about first impressions, it literally is making a list of people that you want to have on your show based on a set of criteria. The other thing that makes it a huge benefit to have that criteria set is that as you start prospecting and sending out these emails to potential guests, if they say, Hey, how did you find me? Why did you reach out? You know, 
a likely place that you look for them because you're, I'm about to share with you some different ways to look for them, but also you can say, well, Hey, I'm only looking for people who X, Y, Z, like this is the criteria that they have to fit that. And you do, you're amazing. I want to hear what you have to say. You're going to have amazing content for my audience. And then also I want to see if it makes sense for us to have another conversation after. And then they're like, Oh, okay, well, what's in it for you? Just that exactly that I, you know, you want to say, what's in it for you is that you get this promotion, you get more exposure, you get to see my audience. Um, I want to make sure that I give you value during the time. So if there are challenges that you have, I'd love to, you know, give you whatever tidbits I might have, um, if any, but I really want to lift you up and see what you're doing because you're providing amazing content. So what's in it for me, number one is that the great content. And number two is that, you know, we meet and I interview you for about 30 to 40 minutes. But then after that, I ask you some selfish questions. And that is my take. That's actually my biggest takeaway because the people that I meet when I'm interviewing matter so much more to me than anything else that that what I call 20 minutes of gold, that matters to me more than really anything else. Like I want you number one, to make sure that you get value out of it. Um, but then you know, we're going to have that time afterwards and I can answer other questions. One thing that comes up in that 20 minutes of gold quite often is that's when you get to provide them value. Cause you're asking them, Hey, what's your biggest challenge when it comes to this? And they're saying, Oh man, you know, this and that you could say, Hey, give them a nugget, like give them some kind of way that they can tackle that challenge right now. Like as soon as they get off the phone and then ask them like, Hey, well, would it make sense for us to talk more about that and expand it? I'd love to see how that worked for you of course, let's set up a time to meet. So, so that's kind of the end game um, when you're going into the prospecting system. So let's get to it. How do you, once you have your list, like this is my ideal criteria that everyone's going to meet, who is a, a potential client for me. How do I put that into action so that I have a growing list of potential, you know, people to reach out to and make that first impression and narrow that down into a really solid gold list of guests. So the first thing is, is you need to, I start with a spreadsheet. So I'm going to share a screen share, um, our, our lead sheet. And you may have seen this before, cause I share it quite often. Um, I show it to people quite often. I don't always share it, but, um, but this is an, as uh, what we use exactly. And, you can see this as zapped our clients. We actually set up a zap for them so that um, as soon as they add people to this list, like we can just fill this list up with um, names and uh, in, you know, information that's helpful as we're prospecting. As soon as they're ready to add them into stage one, they just click that and then the zap sends them over and they automatically get their first email. So, uh, so if you take a look at it, um, you know, this, I feel like there's actually a whole training on how to use this, but bottom line, first name, last name, company title. The reason that I like to use a spreadsheet is, you know, if I was able to get a list of people that fit a certain criteria, if you're able to do that, that's a great start. Then there are people that you're going to meet on LinkedIn. Um, there are people, in fact, I'll just give you, I'm just going to run down a list and I will make this available too. So make sure you message me if you want a copy of this, but um, you, one of the ways that you can grab names and add them to that spreadsheet is, uh, you can go to Amazon and look for people who have, are publishing books that are just about to be released. So look at the next release, go to the category that fits the, uh, the industry, the category of people that you want on your show, and then look up, um, you know, coming up, uh, upcoming books. So Amazon's awesome. Uh, and then also you can LinkedIn, like just look for people on LinkedIn that you feel would be a really good fit for you. And then instead of running them through your CRM, just use that same process and do it through LinkedIn. Um, personally, I've had a lot more success with finding people who fit the criteria than going to LinkedIn and trying to guess whether they fit the criteria. It's, it's a lot tougher. And I've had to screen a lot more people off of LinkedIn than I've ever had to do. Otherwise I've literally with LinkedIn, I turned a lot to, um, more of an application process. So if someone on LinkedIn asked me in the past, I would, I would say like, I would 
give them like a short four question application to see if they fit the criteria. And then I would give them the offer to potentially be on the show. But, um, but LinkedIn is another spot also people in real life. So you're out and about, you're meeting people, getting their names, um, getting their contacts, like just open up your, your Google doc with your spreadsheet and just add them right on the spot. Who needs a business card? Like you can take a business card if you want, but, um, ultimately just get them on the list. I actually add them on the spot. I'll just go to my Google drive app, open it, add their name, add their phone number, add their email address. Boom. Done title. Make sure you put company title, like the same things. Um, you know, or you could just make a copy, uh, take a picture of their, um, of their business card. If they have to give you a business card, like take a cop, take a picture of it. And then, um, and then type their name into the spreadsheet and just say, see, you know, see photo gallery for the, for the, um, business cards. So that's been another thing that I've done a lot because people just feel better sometimes to give you a, a business card. So conferences is another way that you could be meeting people in person. Um, then also, Oh, online communities. So hopefully you're in online communities. So you're in Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups that are for your industry And as you're meeting people, you get to know them better than if you're just doing a search for people on LinkedIn. So as you're getting to know them and you're going, wow, I really like we've, you know, like communicated, you can actually bypass stage one in groups and go right to stage two, which is um, converting them into getting them booked. So, so those online communities are huge, but if they're like, oh yeah, I'm interested in your in your thing, or, or if you're looking for, what do I ask someone in a Facebook group to be on my show? Then again, you go back to your stage one, um, first impression, um, uh, templates. So, and then subreddits, I don't know if you're on Reddit. I, I always bring this up and it's like, Oh, what's Reddit. But, um, there's a lot of, there's a community, you know, different communities based on topics that you can look and see if people are asking certain questions or people answering those questions. You can really get to know who people are and again, reach out and get them into your, your list of potential guests and making that first impression. And then in general, just social media as you're posting, um, you know, you're, uh, when you're posting on social media, you should be posting things of value to your target audience. So ideally those people would emerge and those would be really good people to reach out to and potentially have as guests. So, um, another thing that, again, this happens more in stage five, where you're asking your guests for referrals as they're giving you referrals, you can add them to the spreadsheet as well. And you're going to be really glad that you have this whole system set up because you have this name and it's a cold lead, but you can have like a second version of it that has a paragraph that says, Hey, so-and-so referred me and then have the rest of the email template that you normally use as your first impression email. Um, let's see. And, oh, and then matchmaking service. So I am compiling a list of the different services that you can um, connect with people. I know we use uh, matchmaker.fm. It sounds like a dating site, but it's not. It's for podcasters, podcastguest.com. Um, I mean, there's so many of it, so many of them. In fact, you can go into Facebook and look up podcast guests and you'll find a ton of places where you can advertise your podcast and ask for guests. So um, again, you're kind of bypassing stage one and, and moving into stage two. But um, if if you have people that that you're reaching out to, you can at least grab their name and contact information, get them into the worksheet and then add them to stage two, um, which we'll talk about next week. And let's see, pod match is another one, uh, pod chaser connect, uh, interview connections. Um, let's see. And then also interview valet, uh, which is free for hosts. If you qualify to be on that, you can check with that. Um, and then ask your audience for guest ideas. So as you're on social media, you can just be asking for referrals there. Like, this is exactly who I'm looking for. What do you think? Um, and then also people in your industry, if they've got recommendations. So again, it's just a lot of different ways, but you can get them onto the spreadsheet and I'll show it to you again. I'm going to share it again, 
but just be adding names. Now for my, for us, we add a segment um, because remember I mentioned earlier that we have three target segments and our clients have three target segments for guests, their potential clients, strategic partners, or rock stars. And as you add that, um, you can sort through them later and it's just really good to organize them that way. So, um, and then the source so that when they do ask you, Hey, where did you find me? You can keep track of it there and the date added. So this is just really, I mean, honestly, you can use this for prospecting for anything, (laughs) but, um, and we do, but we mostly use it for podcasting since this is our whole life practically for business. So, so again, um, you know, when I did my first list, I had, I mean, honestly, I had 2,800 people just from searching a specific source for people who fit a very certain, um, detailed criteria. And so my list was full and we, I was able to look through and sort and prioritize. Um, in fact, that's where the status column came in because I, I would put in the basic information and then I would send it to my assistant. And as she was working through it, it would, it would tell me like what kind of information was needed. If it, if it needs more, like if there are notes, it would, it just highlights some different colors so you can look at it and you you're able to sort through it better. Let's stop share. Instead of showing you our CRM, we, we actually have a CRM called my pod blast, but I'm going to show you the, um, let me just look it up. It's the, uh, prospect flow or the lead journey that we use. Now this is a work in progress. So we don't always update this, but this is kind of our skeleton outline so that I can just look at it and see, you know, how it, you know, how does it work? And, um, because if we're building our emails and our sequences, and then if this happens and this happens and how do we get them from stage one to stage two in our CRM, this map helps me a lot. So I've made it available. In fact, again, if you want a copy of this, I do give this away. So if you're like, Hey, I saw this in the training. I don't think I have your client. You have it. So uh, look in your folder. <laughs> I promise I made that for you. So, um, but otherwise, if you're watching this training and you're like, I really want to take a look at that and see how you process people through, uh, just let me know and I'll share a link with you. So, um, as we're prospecting, I mentioned before, and there's another training on the, on the five stage strategic guesting, what each of these stages are, but we're talking about stage one, this is contact made, but it is the first impression. So, this first stage assumes they never respond to us. As soon as they respond to us, they go into stage two. That's why I was saying, if you find somebody on Facebook or a group and you're talking to them and they're like, oh, I'm kind of interested. Could you send me information? They go into stage two. They don't go into stage one because stage two, the emails are, hey, thanks for for showing interest in our podcast. And here's some more information about it. And this is what the next step is. Um, And then, you know, again, stage two is assuming that they never get back to you because it's a follow-up sequence. So, so back to stage one, you can see there's an email that goes out. The second email, it's usually like, you know, like a forward, like, Hey, did you get this email? A lot of times I get a response to that. Um, More so more often I get a response to the second one where it's a forward of the first one than anything else. Uh, The third email, it's kind of like, Hey, um, a little bit different information, If you have a podcast already, another thing I highly recommend is having testimonials from past guests at the bottom of the email. So for example, with our system, we set up custom values for four different uh, testimonials. And then throughout the emails, we kind of mix and match. So we've got three or four different testimonials at the bottom of each one. And we're really really strategic. We actually are really, um, we're systematic about the fact that we get a testimonial after every single podcast episode. So as soon as we do the recording, the first selfish question I ask is what was your overall impression of, of this whole thing? And then boom, there's a testimonial. Sometimes people give it to me in the middle, which is awesome. Um, but at some point we're grabbing that testimonial and then, um, and then we're putting it right into the system so that these emails go out. And at the bottom, it's like, Hey, I was like, I, you know, I love the show. It was so great. And, um, and if you go through our anatomy of an ideal interview, you are only going to get good reviews. And I'm sure you do already. I'm sure you're a pro. So, so anyway, third email that goes out again, a new set of testimonials at the bottom of that. And then the first call, 
this is huge. That first call is kind of like, Hey, are you getting our emails? And if it's, if not, then you have this opportunity to talk to them, obviously. And I oftentimes have an assistant do that. The first goal in stage one is an info call, especially if you have someone else doing your phone calls for you. If they're doing the follow-up calls, hundred percent, you tell them you need to get an info call with me. The info calls take about seven minutes and that's your goal. You want them to take seven minutes. Usually what that info call is, is, Hey, this is for real. No, it doesn't cost you any money. I promise you're going to get promoted. My whole job is for you to look good and for us to get to know each other. They always want to know what's in it for them. Understand your market and your industry and your target audience. What do they value when it comes to getting more exposure and speak directly to that? That's their takeaway. And then when it comes to your takeaway, they're going to want to know, you know, number one, you are exactly the type of person I would love to work with. And so I would like, you're going to provide amazing content. Like you are my target audience. Therefore, you will know exactly what my target audience is going through. It's going to be great content. Number two, I'm only going to take an hour of your time. I'm protective of your time. And the first four minutes or whatever, five minutes, it's housekeeping, making sure that you're comfortable. But then I formally lead into the podcast. We do that interview. It's about 30 to 40 minutes. And then I have 15 to 20 minutes of what I call selfish questions. So that's my, that's what I get. So it's a win-win. It's like you get promotion. I get 15 minutes of selfish questions. And then if it makes sense for us to even have another conversation, that's going to come up. But if it doesn't, it's no big deal. Like we're, I'm just, you're going to provide amazing content. So that's the info call. And then, and usually that's the extent of it. Sometimes they want to know what you're following, how many, what your audience look like, things like that. If you're new, don't just say, oh, nobody like, and I'm sure you won't because you're a pro, but really look at the holistic. I know for our clients, if you are a poise member, if you do the podcast ignition system, specifically what I want you to tell them is that you use a system where 41 plus pieces of content goes out for every single episode and you get a video that you can use however you want. And then as far as the downloads, you can say, I mean, honestly, I don't care about down. If you have a million downloads, like lean into that. But if you're still building your audience, which takes time, it just takes time. That's all there's to it. And everybody knows it. Well, maybe not everybody, but um, it takes time. And so if you're in that spot, I don't want you to be embarrassed of it. Like that's where you're at. And so just say, um, you know, I'm, I'm rolling out this podcast. I've done X number of interviews. I'm so excited to have you in the early round, but I can tell you, this is what I'm investing in promotion and then not money wise, but like, this is how we're promoting. You're going to get a ton of promotion. I, and I did used to say like, it's 20, it's, it's about 2000 to $2,500 worth of promotion that you get out of your episode. You don't get charged for anything. I'm not going to afterwards say, Oh, well now I'll put like, it's free. You get that. It's not free. Like we pay for it, but to you it's free from there. They're usually pretty, pretty happy. So if they're insisting that you have a certain level of audience, as you're building your audience, you will get a ton of benefit out of your podcast without beating yourself up over your audience. So if someone's out there beating you up about your audience, it's probably not a good fit. You probably need to just go, you know what? This isn't right for everybody. Um, I really appreciate your time. That's what we do the info call for. Um, and I wish you well. Sometimes that gets them off. Of, like I've actually gotten interviews saying that. Uh, and not because I wanted, I truly was like, dude, seriously, if you're going to make me feel bad, I don't want you on my show. <laughs> like I've invested a lot in this. So, um, so I just want to empower you that not everyone, you do not want everyone on your show. If you have someone who is, you can feel the friction, like their priorities aren't quite your priorities. That info call will do it for you. Usually one time I had someone tell me they didn't like millennials and I'm like, I love millennials. You probably shouldn't be on my show. <laughs> and then he actually, I got a bunch of emails and he really wanted to be on it. So I, I let him, um, he actually canceled like three more times. I regretted every minute that I had to go back and forth with that guy. So bottom line is, is just trust the process. If the interview doesn't work out, let it go, just let it go. So you're working on building your audience, understand well what you're doing to promote. So you're able to articulate that. And then 
info call done. Like don't talk about it a bunch, just make it quick. Otherwise you're going to hate podcasting and they're not going to like it either. Cause they're going to feel like oh, you already took a bunch of my time. So really strive for the seven minutes, understand what their questions are likely going to be. So you're ready to answer them and then boom, move on. And so that way you're able to have an assistant come in, make that phone call, have a script written for them. Uh, we actually have sample scripts. So if you're, if you're a client, if you're either a podcast ignition system client, or if you subscribe to the white gloves strategic guesting um, system, you also will get sample call scripts. So uh, be sure to ask for that. If you can't find it, um, I've given it to you, but if, if you can't find it, then give me a shout. The next is a note card. And you know what? Um, again, I worked with real estate agents for a long time and this was my best converting moment was the note card. So they probably had a voicemail on their phone. They know they've gotten three other emails. And now suddenly out of the blue, you have handwritten and mailed them a note. Now you can have your assistant do it and make a copy of it, put it on your CRM. So you remember what was said. Uh, I had a script. My, my assistant just wrote them out and, you know, boom, it was done. But it, it's so powerful. Um, there's also, there are a couple tools online. You can look up uh, handwritten notes um, that they actually use machines that like press in a ballpoint pen. So it looks really like it's handwritten um, that you can use too. They usually run like 350 to $4 a card. So just kind of be balancing out like what's more expensive, having an assistant do it or uh, having a machine do it. And then the next one is another email. I mean, you're dealing with busy people, so it's not uncommon that they'll get to this spot and they go, oh my gosh, the email after the note card, also incredibly huge moment um, because I also, I don't have the scripts in front of me, but I believe it's like something like, hey, did you get our note card? Um, you know, I, I, I'm assuming you're busy because you're just amazing and that's why I want you on my show. So um, so with that, I, especially with real estate agents, that was a huge conversion moment because they were like, yeah, that was really nice that you sent that note card. In fact, they would get that email and they're like, yep, I thought I already, I thought I already emailed you, but I didn't. So I thought I'd call or they would, or they would email me back and say, oh shoot, I forgot to say it. Yes. It was really nice. And they would say yes or no. Now, by the time you're here, you start to understand the value of a no. As soon as someone says no earlier, you're like, Thank you. Thank you for responding. And if you're in sales at all, you might already feel the same way, but this is such, I mean, you're kind of out of it because a lot of it's automated or delegated, but even when you get a no, you're like, oh, cool. You're out of my system. You're not costing me money <laughs> for all the follow-up. Um, but you're just, you just want the yeses. So you just need to flip a lot of rocks sometimes to do it. And then there's the second call. Um, sometimes again, they'll get the, you know, again, you're working. I always assume busy people, they're just missing it. Cause they haven't told you to stop bugging them yet. Um, there's one more email after that. That's just like, Hey, you know, I'm get, I get it. You're not interested. <laughs> so see ya. Sometimes that is the best, you know, that's a, it's not the best converting because the note card is huge, but, and then the email after that, but this is a big one too, where they're like, e if they're a yes, they'll pop out suddenly there. Cause like, Oh, okay. The chance is almost gone. And then we leave it open for 30 days and then it's gone. So that's stage one, be sure to tune in for next week. We're going to talk about stage two, which is if they respond in any way, if they respond to you in a way where it's like, Oh, I'd really like more information before I really commit to it. They go into stage two. If they're like, I want to be on your show. And you're like, awesome. I want you to be on my show. Then they skip right to stage three. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, obviously, I get really excited about this. Um, on a, um, interviews are my favorite part. You know, there was a post on a podcast movement Facebook group yesterday or the day before, and someone asked, like, hey, podcasters, what do you want for Christmas? And I saw someone post that every podcaster should want to be on the Joe Rogan show. This is going to give you a little bit of insight into who I am and whether what I show you is something that you want to participate in because you'll see that I really value the interviews. I responded to that post where someone said, Hey, everybody should want to be on Joe Rogan's show. I said, I would prefer to have Joe Rogan on my show and interview him. And the reason is, is I, <laughs> I'm afraid to even say it, but I don't like Joe Rogan's show. I mean, tons of my family love it. I don't have anything against it. Um, I, 
But I will tell you, he's, I have so much respect for how he interviews. And I, I value the interview and the relationship over everything else. So the idea that I have so much respect for how he interviews says a lot. I just don't enjoy sitting and listening to the show, but I have, and I will, and I do because I'm studying how he interviews. I just, he asks obvious questions. He engages his people in uh, conversations that you had no idea they were going to go there. And those are the types of things that I love. I just think they're magical when they're happening in the middle of a podcast episode. So when someone said everyone should want to be on a show, it's true. Yes. If I was on a show, it would be freaking phenomenal. I would love it. Obviously our show would get a lot of attention. That would be amazing. But the one step higher for me is getting that valuable, just brilliance about what is he thinking? How does he do it? What is his process? Um, And how can I absorb how he does it so that I can be a better interviewer? Because that goes beyond your show. Okay. You could have a show now, you could have a different show in three years. You have the same show for eight years. But if you can take home understanding how to interview and treat and be with your guest, um, that it just transcends this kind of transactional, how do I manufacture all these listeners? And it becomes really part of what you're sharing with the world. And if I was able to interview him and get that, I would get it. So selfish, yes. But also, who you know, I my podcast is for podcasters. So I would, you know, hopefully if I'm asking these questions, I'm imagining that you are too. And so being able to have that, I feel like would transcend the looking for this immediate gratification of this big, huge audience that may or may not have anything to do with my show, but instead building a foundation of a show that could really change lives, whether it's 20 people. I mean, imagine being in a room and being able to affect 20 people Um, or as you're growing, having that true connection grow, uh, organically and in a really real and powerful way. So anyway, obviously I get carried away when it comes to talking about interviews. So please join us live next week. Our, uh, our trainings are free when you join us live and they're recorded the later, uh, replays of the recorded versions are available to our clients, our high-level mastermind members, and of course, our podcast ignition system uh, family. So have a great week. Uh, Be sure to let me know if you have any questions. I would love to talk to you more about podcasting. If that's something that you want some help with, um, I would love to do that. So have a super week and we'll talk soon.